Hello, this is Greg Deckler and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Today's video is about tri-hybrid crosses, but not really. <laughs> I'll explain here in a second, but uh, tri-hybrid crosses in genetics, right? Uh, so believe it or not, one of my very first uh, computer programs, I had biology class uh, like my freshman year of high school and I had a computer science class right after it. And we were learning about, you know, genetics and tri-hybrid crosses. And so, you know, I went into the computer science lab after that a class and I, I wrote a basic program to do the tri-hybrid crosses for me, you know, as a computer program. Not that tri-hybrid crosses are like rocket science or anything, um, but it seemed like a, a really, really repetitive and laborious task to do it. Um, so I'm like, eh, I'll see if I can make a computer do it. Um, and was able, you know, successful. So I figured, why not do the same thing in DAX? And if, all right, so if you're not familiar with uh, what a tri-hybrid cross in genetics are, if you don't quite remember your biology from high school, you know, basically you have, you know, uh, you're doing three gene, you know, sets of genes, right? Dominant and and uh, non-dominant genes, okay? So big R is, is representative of dominant, little r is representative of, of your non-dominant. dominant. dominant. Um, and so, you know, the same thing for color, which is represented by Y, lowercase y, and C, lowercase c. Now, you know, what you do is you take these and you, you, know, you have different pairs. So uh, capital R, capital R is results in round. Capital R, lowercase r results in round. But two lowercases results in the recessive gene or recessive trait, if you will, of, you know, wrinkled, apparently, in this case, for, for peas. Um, and same thing for, like, your colors. You can get yellow. Et cetera, et cetera. And then you end up with this chart, right? And there's rules for this chart to the, you know, in terms of you have the dom most dominant uh, genes listed, and then you know, you keep on going down and same like that. And you know, and basically you get a chart of all the different possibilities um, that those two, if you cross those two together, of what they'll make. Now, if you're familiar with DAX, uh, you're like, well, that's that could be problematic in DAX, Greg, because DAX is is case insensitive. Well, okay, two problems with that statement. One. The data model is case insensitive, uh, is my understanding. Um, and two, it's not really that it's case insensitive. It's really like it's stupidly case insensitive sometimes. Um, or maybe a better word is it's case preemptive or case displacive. I'm not I'm not quite sure, um, but I'm going to get into it um, with you as far as this goes. Um, but let's just take the statement that DAX or the data model is case insensitive, even though it's it's dumber than that. Um, but let's just say that it is, right? Um, and then that's the long and the short of it. Like, you know, when I think about, you know, a BI and data analytics tool, the first feature that I think of that I want in that tool is for it to just, you know, randomly change my data for me, you know, without asking me, right? And then to like munge my data up. So that's not a true representation of what the actual data is. You know, that's the very first feature that I could think of that I would want in a data analytics tool, right? I mean, how stupid, how stupid is that? I mean, think about it. Maybe it's not, doesn't rise up to the level of like measure total stupid, but I mean, stupid. I mean, how, who comes to this conclusion, right? Oh, well, if I'm going to import a bunch of SKUs um, into that, into my data model, and I have 111 capital A 444 is one SKU and 111 lowercase a 444 is another SKU, I want DAX, I want DAX and Power BI to treat those the same because not. I mean, who in the world makes these stupid decisions? It's just, it's mind boggling to me. It bears no logic to anything. I can't fundamentally understand why you would base a data modeling tool and you would munge up the data and change it, you know, from what it is in the original data. It's just asking for just to cause problems. And I'll show you exactly those problems, you know, in the, in the context of genetics and trihybrid crosses, just exactly what I what I have to go through to get this stuff to work. Now, before I do that, though, I just want to show you how stupid this is and just how fundamentally crazy the way this works. All right, so I've created this uh, table here, and as you can see here, I've got a I've got a capital S, and I've got my Unicode. Um, and actually, I'll show you the code for that. It's just doing a Unicode, a left of one. I'll show you why I did that in a second. And now if you're, you know, you're kind of sweaty, you're like, oh, Greg, you know, the Unicode for capital S is 53. You know, well, great job Googling that, except you forgot the fact that that's 53 hex. And 
DAX returns back these in decimal, and 53 hex is 83, 83 decimal. So there you go. All right, so that's why it's 83. All right, so now I've got Power Query up here somewhere. Okay, so that is, but now let's say I change this source. And let's say I put a lowercase s and then a capital S. Click OK, click Apply, come back here. Oh, look, now they're both capital S's or lowercase s's, and their Unicode is 115. Those are lowercase, 115. You just saw that it was, it, it knew that it was 80, 83, like just two seconds before, right? But now, now, it's, now it's clueless. All right, so let's go back and we'll edit this. And we'll say we'll we'll say capital S lowercase s. Come back. Apply this. Oh, now they're capital S's. They're both capital S's and they're both 83. Great. OK, well, what happens when you do something like this? Go back here. So now I have capital S. I have lowercase s. We'll switch this back to lowercase s, capital S. And then we'll do start with a capital S, right? Click OK. Apply. Oh, there we go. It knows that that one's a capital S. So this is what I mean by stupidly case insensitive sometimes. It's, it's now, you know, obviously if I put in like lowercase start, you know, then it would, oh, actually, let's do it. I mean, let's, I mean we're here. Why not? I've already taken up this much time. So now if I put in lowercase start, of course, now what do you think it's going to be? What do you think that set, that last one's going to be? Of course, it's going to be 83. There it is. Yep, it's 83. So and it thinks it's capital S. So this is what I mean by like, why? Why, Microsoft? Why? Why? I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is going to be like, oh, well, Greg, it's a compression feature and, and it allows you to compress up your data better and blah, blah, blah. Who gives a crap if it's compressed, if it's wrong? OK, I mean, let's just say table stakes are leave my data alone. Just bring in my data. Don't change it in any way. But no, you know, oh, well, we got to compress it up so that it's incorrect. Stupid. Ah, well, but anyway, so what kind of problems does this cause and how can you get around? I'm going to show you the end result first, and then uh, then I'll show you how I did it. So big reveal. So here is my tri hybrid cross, and as you can see, it looks very much like our picture, like uh, down here, um, where we've got like capital all capitals R Y C R Y C R Y lowercase C. Right? There's a specific order of these um, that you're supposed to follow and adhere to. And trying to do that, and you can see that mine actually does that. Right? I have all my capital R Y C my capital R, Y, and then lowercase c, capital R, lowercase y, capital C. And, you know, it goes in the same order as this guy. So, so we did it, right? And then I actually put in some conditional formatting. So, you know, I've got like, oh, it's round, it's green, it's smooth. And then, you know, if it has green in it, it shows up green. Otherwise, it's yellow. And again, you can see it mirrors this, right? I don't have the nice fancy images, but, you know, it does the job. Okay, so how do you get there? Oh, it ain't pretty. Uh, I can tell you that. So first thing I did was I came in here to and made a table. I'm using my table constructor, which I love the table constructor. I did a video about it for the Enterprise DNA recently. It's great. Uh, I think I like it better than Enter Data Query sometimes. Um, so as you can see, because you can't do this in an Enter Data Query. Um, so I, in what I'm doing, I got this from a Chris, Chris Webb blog article, um, but is using he was using it in Power Query, but it's basically you use Unicar 8203. 80203 is a non-printing uh, like white space character that takes up no space. OK, so <laughs> what you do is uh, you create, you know, your R. Anytime you need a capital, you you suffix it with the Unicar 8203. And that's going to help us make it unique uh, compared to a lowercase r. Um, so that's what I did. So I created, so you can see uh, the table that I created, gene properties, ends up like this. Right, so here we go. Should have should have started with this one. So I have capital R R, capital R lowercase R, and these are all, you know, unique as far as the data model or DAX is concerned. Um, 
you know, every all of these are unique. So I don't get it where it's munging up my data. OK, in terms of it's saying, oh, this capital R is really lowercase R or this cap lowercase R is really capital R. Um, anyway, so I've got all those gene properties there. All right. So that's the first part. Um, and now my second part is I actually you know, do the same thing. I have my tri hybrid cross. So I'm crossing two of these essentially, right? Capital R, lowercase R, capital Y, lowercase Y, capital C, lowercase C. And they actually show up in the proper casing um, because I've got the Unicar 8203s behind the capitals in this case. OK, so now what I need. <laughs> Um, so now what I need is I need uh, my headers for my right, my columns in my in my rows. Um, so what I had to do there is uh, I'll just take the rows one. <laughs> this would have been real easy um, had I not had to worry about all of the proper casing and all of that. So say so basically what I'm doing is I'm okay. Grab my my first pair of my first jeans. Right, so that's index one and two. And I grab my second one, grab my third one, and then I can generate. I can use two generate uh, statements uh, in succession. Right, I generate all the possibilities between gene one and gene two, and then use then take that table and generate all the possibilities bet with between those and gene three. Now, if this would have been, that would have been the end of it. Let's just put it that way. If it wasn't for this stupid casing stuff that I have to do. Um, so the rest of this is actually just accounting for the casing and trying to get the ordering right. Right. Remember, I, you know, I, you know, you want your capital R, capital Y, capital C, then your capital R, capital Y, then lowercase C, and then your your cap, you know, your capital R, lowercase Y, capital C. You know, there's a specific order for these things. So this is I'm not going to go into the sort statement because it's a it's a train wreck. Um, but basically the store sort statement is going in and figuring that out, right? So it's figuring out um basically what the sort what the sorting should be for you know for each one of those and it's using the length of the of the gene pairs so i can figure out whether there's a capital in it or not a capital in it and then i have to pull out the various different things and i'm you know adding stuff and anyway all the all the, all this says in this sort code right here is that i'm i'm doing I'm creating a sort column it started out as an actual calculated column um whoa all right so now uh, let's go back to here and then re scan in. All right, so then what I can do is I can use my concatenate X, right, to take that table and have my genes, put a pipe character so I turn it into a path, and then I'm sorting it by that sort column that I created in ascending. Um, all right, so once I have that, then I can pull each one of those out in order, right, with an index next to it. Um, and that's what the last part this result is. And so then that results in this table down here. Go away. Maybe if I click this and then this. No, it's just still just. Thanks. Thanks, Power BI. OK, anyway, it's hard to see. Maybe if I do this. There. Anyway, OK, so as you can see, I've got my things in proper sort order so I can actually then what I have to do is I have to take this and you can see I can then sort by my index. But because I did all of the all of that creation and I didn't create this index as like a separate column that then referred back to genes and all of that, which is how I tried to do it the first place um, and got a yeah, circular reference, of course. Um, but if you do it all in one table, then at the result of it, then you can actually at the end, you can take your genes and say, OK, genes column and sort and have it sort by index. So that is how, you know, I did this in the columns is the exact same. It's a duplicate, um, same exact code and everything else, same sort by all of that. Um, so that is how I got my headers, right? And I got them in the right order, you know, painful. Let me tell you. Um, OK, so then, of course, I need to get this part, this information right here. Uh, so the way we do that is we go and expand this a little bit. Uh, here's my crossed measure, and this is a nightmare. Um, again, because mainly because of, well, I have to find, you know, I have to go in and figure out uh, whether it's proper, uppercase, lowercase, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, put it in the correct order, right? Because when you have this right here, Right. If you want it to be R lowercase R, not lowercase R R. Um, and so you have to worry about all that kind of stuff. So the way you do that, 
we'll just walk through the code real briefly. Um, so I just grab, you know, my max column, my max row. I figure out the length of my of my count. I figure out the length of my row and my column. Uh, first gene row. So then I'm figuring out, like, basically I'm trying to find if it's a Unicar 8203. Um, basically, if, if, if its length of the row is three, then I know it's all lowercase. Um, so I just return the left of the row one. Um, otherwise, I say, OK, give me go find var 8203. Um, if there is car is two, I mean, the 8203 appears in the second uh, position, then I know that it's uh, that it's a, the, fir the, the, up, the first character is uppercase. <laughs> So I just grab a left of the row of two because I want to include that 8203. I got to preserve that. Otherwise, Dax and data model is going to screw me over. Um, otherwise, you know, then it's lowercase and it's left row one. Gene column is the same. It's the exact same code, uh, only for the column. Uh, for for gene, second gene row, it's kind of a similar type of thing. There's a little more logic involved um, to figure out whether the second character is uppercase or lowercase, right? Um, but same kind of ba basic methodology. Same and it's the exact same code for second gene column. Then I have, you know, second gene row, first gene row, first gene pair, second gene pair. Um, so then what I have to do in those is I have to say, is the first gene row greater than the length of the first gene column? And so if it is, then first gene row has a capital in it and first gene column doesn't. Um, so I'll put the first gene row. Um, and concatenate it with first gene column. Otherwise, it doesn't matter because they're both the same or, uh, you know, the uh, first gene column is a capital and the first gene row is, a, is lowercase. So same thing for second gene pair. And then I have my code for third gene row and third gene column. And then third gene pair is very similar kinds of code. All right, so once you're through all of that, um, then you can actually go out and let's see, what is this doing? First gene property. Oh, so I'm going out and looking up my properties from that table that I had. And I'm saying, OK, so I have my gene pair properties. My pair equals first gene pair, then grab, return back the property. So that returns me back whether it's red, yellow or green or red, you know, round or red, red, green or yellow, round or wrinkled or constricted or smooth. Right. And then I can just concatenate all of that up together using unicar 10s and unicar 13s for control feed line you know line returns or carriage return line feeds whatever you want to call it and then i put in my you know my first gene pair second gene pair third gene pair and that gives me my result so see it's that easy right and then i created a couple uh like a background color formatter so what this all this does is basically looks at the color um and if it finds it, then it returns that color. So it's trying to find green or yellow, if you will. And then if it returns green or yellow, and that's how I format the background. And then my font color formatter is just basically, hey, if the background's green, then make the text white. Otherwise, make the text black. So there you have it. So, but you know, this it was an interesting. It was interesting. It was a really interesting um, thing to do. It was kind of nostalgic to kind of do something I kind of almost started my computer science career with if you will um but it was really interesting in terms of i think it's a great example of just how miserable not preserving your data the way it should be preserved like basically munging your data um with the case insensitivity or stupidly case insensitive sometimes the way that dax and the data model do it um just this kind of problems it, it can uh, it's a great uh, it's a great showcase for for those kind of problems and and how to get around those problems i guess i think um so that's it that's all for this video case insensitivity or stupidly insensitive sometimes is is a dumb idea and it should never have been implemented but it's too late now the uh the cat's out of the bag at this point i can't ever imagine that microsoft will ever fix this or even give us a toggle to say hey don't be stupid you know don't lunge my data for me uh, because it's a bad idea but uh, yeah, probably never. I mean, if they can't fix measure measure tools, they're sure as heck not going to fix this. So that's it for all. That's it. Everyone have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.